In the previous video I went through the functionality of Podemo, my Android application that allows you to connect Android phone to your car using legacy iPod 30 pins interface. However, this requires assembling custom cable or custom Bluetooth dongle. So in this video I am going to present four options of such connections. One wired version and three wireless versions. And very important, this is open source project. I did it exclusively for fun, not for money. So we can download all schematics and the source code of this application from its GitHub page. All links are available in the description. Please also visit the GitHub page if you need more details on creating custom dongle. To make it easier to navigate through this video, here is the agenda. You can jump directly to the part you are interested in. First part describes how the legacy iPod 30 pins interface works. It is important to understand it before assembling your own cable. Then we'll go through different connection options. Before moving to connection options, I think it is important to understand how communication between iPod and a car works. Legacy iPod connector has 30 pins, however iPod is using only few of them, at least for audio mode, and we are only interested in audio mode though. So looking at iPod 30 pin connector specification, we can see that pins number 2, 3 and 4 are used to transmit audio signal. This is analog audio signal that could be hooked up directly to AUX input in your car. Then we need pins 12 and 13 for serial communication. This is exactly the same communication that was used in old style COM ports, like this one. Today the standard is still in use, but modern computers are not comp uh, supplied with COM ports by default. But you can easily grab very cheap USB to serial dongles like this one. Online, of course. The only difference with legacy serial port is signal level, but we will not go into these details. We can assume that every cheap USB to serial dongle based on the chips that are supported by this project will do the work. Ok, additional pins that we will need are pin 1, 15 and 16, these are ground connections. Pin 23 provides plus 5 volts. Pin 18, as per specification, some car requires plus 3.3 volts to be applied to this pin to detect that iPod is connected. My car, Volvo S80, didn't require it, but I had information from multiple users that their car does not switch to iPod mode until plus 3.3 volts is applied to this pin. The things have changed when 30 pin connector was replaced with lightning connector. Now all communication between devices became digital, including audio. In addition, every lightning cable has a built-in authentication chip which prevents third-party devices from being used with Apple products. Of course, it was quickly cracked and now such cables are widely available. However, implementing direct connection between Android phone and Apple accessory will require Android phone to mimic Apple device. Theoretically, it is possible, but in practice it will require writing a special driver for Android that will work only on rooted devices and I am not planning to develop it anytime soon. Too many other interesting projects are waiting. Now as you are familiar with 30 pin legacy iPod connection interface, let's move to connection options. I am presenting here one wired option and three wireless options. However, before we go to option descriptions, there is one component that is required by all options and it requires more attention. It is iPod 30 pins female socket. If you are lucky, you can find pod socket breakout board that sometimes appear on random online stores. Alternatively, you can follow my path and buy some cheap 30 pin to lightning adapter. Remove all unnecessary lightning part and solder the wires directly to the connector. There it is. Looks ugly, but it works. Ok, but let's move to the connection options. The most simple and the most easy to make is wired version of the interface. For this option you will need iPod 30 pin female socket to hook up car cable to, obviously, audio jack to connect to your phone, USB to serial adapter, Podemos support all popular adapters like PL2303, CP21 series or FTDI devices. 
here is the full list of USB to serial dongles that are supported. Finally, you need USB OTG cable to connect serial dongle to your phone. Now let's have a look at the connection diagram. It is really simple, you need only basic soldering skills to prepare such cable. These are audio lines and this is serial connection for data transfer. Additional notice regarding this thread wire is required. Some cars and docking station will only recognize that iPod is connected when you pull up pin number 18. It means you need to provide plus 3.3 volts to this pin. To be honest, you can omit this resistor and diode and connect 3.3 volts pin on the USB dongle directly to pin 18. I added resistor only to protect the car by limiting the current and diode is added for the same reason, in case pin 18 is used for some other undocumented features. Finally, important note about pin number 2. This pin is ground connection for audio and it should not be shorted with other ground pins like pin 1, pin 15 or pin 16 unless really necessary. In my first version I shorted all of them and had got random hearable noises, so I really recommend not doing it. If you prefer wireless connection, why wouldn't you? Then this is the option you might go with. It is relatively easy to assemble. Instead of USB to serial adapter, it uses Bluetooth dongle with SPP profile. SPP stands for Serial Port Profile. It does the same as USB to serial, just over the air, using Bluetooth connection. For audio system, instead of mini jack in this setup, I used XA3868 model, which provide audio connectivity over Bluetooth. Instead of XS3868, you may use any Bluetooth model that provides audio profile, or in more technical words, A2DP profile. A2DP stands for Advanced Audio Distribution Profile. Finally, you need to provide proper power source for mentioned models. For this purpose, you can use any cheap DC to DC converter with adjustable voltage. This is needed because as per 30 pin standard, this connector provides only 5 volts power source and we need lower voltages to power our Bluetooth devices. In this particular setting, with the HC05 and XZ3868, I recommend to set voltage to 3.55 volts. This is because if the voltage drops below 3.5 volts, uh, then XZ3868 will play audible low voltage warnings. However, exceeding 3.6 volts may burn HC05, so something in between should be just fine. And again, please pay attention to audio ground. In this setup, it is separate line too. Another setup that you can use is based on RN52 breakout board. Big advantage of RN52 module is that you need just one Bluetooth module because it provides both serial profile and audio profile. The disadvantage of RN52 is relatively high price. For brand new model, you will have to pay 30 to 40 dollars on eBay. Or you can do as I did and buy this model directly from manufacturer's page. Then you will pay only 15 euro plus shipping. But this is for version without breakout board. If you would like to buy breakout board version though, then it will cost you 46 on sparkfunk.com. So this is why I ended up with the RN52 model and my initial setup looked like this. But believe me, it worked. Ok, let's have a look at the connection schematics. Actually, it is very similar to previous schematics, just here instead of two Bluetooth models, we are connecting all wires to one module. And again, important note about audio ground connection. I don't know why, but SparkFun didn't make a dedicated path for audio ground, but we need it. Luckily, there is a thick copper area below speaker low minus sign that is connected to audio ground pin on the module. This is pin number 39 in the model. You can use this area to solder audio ground wire. Additional and very important note about the RAN52 model is that it uses differential audio output to provide superior audio quality. Differential audio connection, uh, sometimes it is also called balanced audio, 
uses a pair of cables for each channel. The advantages of such connection are reduced crosstalk, better noise resistance, ability to carry signal through a longer cable, by the way, this is why it was commonly used in landline telephony, and many others. Differential audio output is the reason why RAN52 has positive and negative lines for each audio channel. When using differential audio, there is no need in using ground wire, because signal is carried by two wires for each channel. However, in standard AVX port and in iPod 30 pin connector, unbalanced audio connection is used. So how to convert balanced signal into unbalanced? In previous setup, I simply used positive lines of each channel and audio ground pin. This setup in general works very well, but it has two disadvantages. First, audio signal gain is around 60-70% to 70 of what it should be. Second, every time the music stops playing, after 4-5 to five seconds, RN52 disables audio amplifier to save power. And it could be heard as a single click, which could be sometimes annoying. Due to all of the above, I developed a dedicated board that uses RAN52 model and TPA6112 differential amplifier. The output of this amplifier is unbalanced audio, which is exactly what I needed to fit to the car or docking station. Additionally, the schematic contains a dedicated power circuit to provide 3.3 volts for RAN52 module. I used EasyADA online tool to design the schematics and PCB. Later I used old school methods to develop PCB. I just printed each side of PCB with laser printer and then transferred the image using ion to copper clad board and finally developed it in a ferric chloride solution. I think I reached the limit of this method actually because width of some parts are less than 1mm and it took me 3 times before PCB layout was printed correctly on copper clad and all parts were intact. The final result may not be the best, some parts fell apart during development eventually, but after all the quality of this PCB was acceptable and it worked straight away. Ok folks, I hope this video will help you to build your own Podemo interface. Remember, this is open source project, so you can download all you need from github page of this project, all including application source code and schematics. But if there are any questions left, please ask them in the comments. I will try to help, and if you find any problem with application, please report it on GitHub. This way it will be easy for me to track all bugs and to fix them. Stay tuned for my next projects and see you next time!